I have a project we're working down in the Springs right now. It's a full gut, floorboards down to the studs, how to redesign the, the house. And it's been challenging. We just take it one day at a time. Everything's figure outable. Yeah. Everything's figure outable and you make it happen. Welcome to The Raquel Show. This show is for entrepreneurs who want to play bigger in business and in life. And as you all know, I love bringing people who love to play bigger. And my guest today is someone that is very dear to me, someone who I met at my women's event two years ago. And she's married to a serial entrepreneur who has a brokerage real estate investment division, a real estate team, mortgage, ancillary service, you name it all. In addition, she runs the investment division, flipping a few homes a year while managing a household, running kids around from practice to practice. And I'm excited to have this conversation around something that is not talked about a lot is how do you support an entrepreneur? How do you support a visionary? And how do you balance business and personal life? And it's a topic that I can't wait to share with this talented woman that you are about to listen to, or if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome to the show, Rocky Dixon, or I should say Rocio Dixon, because that's her. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the introduction was amazing. Thanks, Raquel. Well, I, I meant it all, and I could probably go on and on and on. So well, here's where I want to start this conversation. Like I said, there, yeah. you and I were talking offline. Like, there's barely any books that you can find when it comes to supporting a visionary, supporting an entrepreneur. So let's like start from the beginning of like how long have you and your husband Daniel been together, married? Because you guys have done a journey for sure. It's been one hell of a journey for sure. So many peaks and valleys. So we've been together total 20 years, married 13 years. That's a long time. And when did you, when did, first of all, congratulations, because not a lot of people ha can say that. When did he first start his business? I'm sure like when you met him 20 years ago, you guys didn't have businesses that you guys have today. No, but what's really interesting is I actually told him when we first met, I wanted to flip properties when... I was younger when we first met, but that was my goal. And you're so doing it today. Yeah, yeah, and I'm doing it today. But he started his journey. He actually worked at Trulia before Zillow bought them out. And he was teaching agents how to build their business and to convert leads. So he's like, why not just do it myself? So I was actually eight months pregnant with Kylie, my second, our second, when he decided to start his real estate classes. So I was pretty, he was working full-time job and then started real estate and working nighttime until he built a big enough pipeline to uh, quit the full-time job. So, so your main role, at, yeah, your main role at the time was like supporting the kids or the household at that time. I was not working. I was taking care of the house and the kids, but with his clients, I was putting up yard signs. I was putting up lock boxes. If he had other showings, I would go show other clients. So it was a journey from the beginning. So one of the questions that I get, even with the people that I coach today, is like typically, especially with you running around, putting signs up, his phone must be going off all the time, right? This is a different – it's not nine to five anymore or eight to five, right? This is Correct. now he jumps into running a business and you almost feel like his phone's going off. How do you manage the demanding or the demands of real estate, especially even like nights and weekends? I feel like a lot of failures, a lot of work in progress, and we had to learn as we were going. There was times where I did felt like he wasn't present, so he had to adjust. There was times where the kids wanted his attention and he was focused on building a legacy and grinding and knowing how hard he worked now would eventually put us in a place where we are today. Yeah. So when did you guys decide as like a family, like, okay, like it was crazy. He wasn't present. What did Daniel, like, how did you get him to go, okay, now he's present. Now we can go build something even bigger. 
Or was that like always part of the plan of, okay, once we get here, we're going to stair step to here. What does that look like? I don't know if there was a set plan in place. We just knew we were on this journey and we're on it together. And whatever happens, I got your back. We'll figure it out and we'll make it happen. See, I love that. I think that's super key. Yeah. Was there ever a time that you wanted to quit and be like, I don't know that I want this? Probably this last year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Real estate's hard, right? (laughs) Building businesses is hard. And I think this is like so important because this is not what they talk about on stage. They only talk about the glory and no challenges. No, No, it's been a full trial and error the the entire 20 years that we've been together to get us where we are today. And the last two years in the market, the, the businesses, everything was so rough and it has affected so many people, even us. And it affected us in every single aspect of our lives. But I'm grateful for it because we're better now. Yeah. So like, obviously you guys bought a brokerage. Was it last year? Uh, October of 22. 22 to to, almost two years ago. Right. And then the market market shifted. You also Mm -hmm. have a mortgage company, right? And and then when did you start flipping homes? When did you start to really get involved in the business? Because there was a period of time where as a woman and as taking care of the kids, sometimes you're like, I want to help, but I also want to find what my role or what I want to do. Right. And also with that, being a mom and a wife and supporting somebody who's driven is tough. So I had to find a place and learn to find myself to get there. And in the meantime, what I did was whatever's in our face, whatever we got, let's figure it out. So our first townhome we bought in 09. And we ended up selling it five years later. So when we sold that, that was my first flip, essentially. So we had to go cheap. I had to learn about Formica spray and painting cabinets and learning to drill and hammer myself so we can save money on the labor. But we sold it five years later for almost double the cost. And that's how we started our flip. Yeah. See, I I think that is so neat when I watch your stories. And for those that don't follow her, you're going to definitely want to follow this woman, is that she is on the ground. Very few women investors, let alone like people that actually flip and that are actually drilling, like breaking things down. Like I just give my hats to you because I think you show what's possible and you give other people, whether female or not, permission that they can do it too. So I just want to acknowledge you for that. Thank you. So like from listening to, for those that are listening that are spouses that, ha- like you said, that are married to somebody that has a crazy vision or love building businesses, what advice would you give to them when it comes to truly supporting them? From my experience, I would say you have to be all in. If you're not all in, it's going to make the entire process and journey so much more difficult. Mm. And I was there at that one point to where I wasn't fully supportive. And looking back now, I realized how I could have been a better partner at the time. So give us like some advice around that. Like, how did you know that? Oh my gosh, I could have done a lot better. Like, what are some of the things that you could have done better? Well, therapy has been amazing in my life. (laughs) So therapy for sure has made me more aware and has allowed me to see how I wasn't supportive with Daniel with trying to pull him in and thinking about me versus thinking about the bigger vision. And yes, it's good to think about yourself as well, but there's something so much bigger than what we are. And it it's about the family. It's about the unit. It's about being connected. I needed to learn that on my end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now how do you balance it all? You flip houses, you support your husband, you have a very active like sports mom life, running kids from practice to practice and all of their activities. Like, how do you not go insane? How do you balance it all? Leverage. Or are you just super <laughs> organized? Leverage okay, leverage. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do without my mother-in-law, without help, family, Daniel. Our kids are so active with sports. Sometimes we have triple sports in a day and I have to make sure that the kids get shifted around, picked up, eaten, back home, in bed on time, homework's done. It's hard right now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any secrets that you've learned throughout the years that you're like, okay, 
definitely leverage, definitely a calendar, anything like that you can give our audience or any tips? I would say grace because yeah. th this is my first go around with all three kids with sports and I'm, the kids are going to forget their shorts. They're going to be like, Hey mom, can you come by? And this just happened this last week. I forgot short for basketball practice. I got you. Let me stop what I'm doing. Let me go take care of him to go back to what I'm doing. I love that. I love that you've got to embrace grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you help with the flips. How do you handle unexpected setbacks? Cause we know that flips don't always go as planned. And then like, how do you manage that? Because you have a partner, which is your husband. Like, how do you guys overcome some of the challenges that you guys deal with? So I basically handle all the details. He, I will give him anything that he really needs to know, like any big decisions or cost or money, but anything else falls on me as far as scheduling contractors, the vendors timeline of the project. I have a project we're working down in the Springs right now. It's a full gut floorboards down to the studs, how to redesign the, the house. And it's been challenging. You just take it one day at a time. Everything's figure outable. Yeah. Everything's figure outable and you make it happen. What do you think the biggest misconception is about flipping homes? It costs too much. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know the market. Mm. how to sell, when to sell. It's a male industry. Oh yeah. Let's talk about that for a moment. Do you, like when you deal with contractors, do you find it hard because you are a female or do you find it as an advantage going, Hey, you know what? I actually know my stuff or I've learned to know my stuff even more because of my gender. I would say both. Sometimes it hurts me because I'm a female, so they don't take me as seriously. But mm -hmm. at the same time, or a lot of the time, actually, because I'm a female, it's a lot easier for me in this male industry. Mm. So it helps more. Yeah. So you see it as both ways. Yeah. So I know when I have to switch it on and switch it off to where I can use it towards my advantage. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything that you guys strategize on to ensure that you guys have profitability in between your investment deals and making sure, I mean, because it's one thing to have a partner, I say in this business, but it's another when it's like your actual husband <laughs> and it actually impacts more than, you know, just you guys, it impacts the family. Is there anything that you yeah. guys have as far as, you know how people have buy boxes? Do you guys have like rules of here's like it, when a flip goes wrong or here's, here's our protocol when XYZ happens? We just communicate for the most part, but definitely financials like anything if numbers changes margins change honey but that's your job and i'll handle the rest <laughs> so so right yesterday we went to um a conference with tom ferry and i learned that during election months the market goes down about 15 percent every election year so with this flip that we're currently doing i'm like honey we should not list it until the start of the spring so we don't get docked an extra 15% because I'm not willing to sell this property that I just completed yeah. for less than what it's really worth. Right. So right now we're in the middle of these discussions of we can do an off-market deal or we just wait till the beginning of spring for this project. Yeah. I love it. Now, how do you guys get, you guys have three kids. How do you involve your children in, or do you guys in any of the businesses or any of the aspects of the businesses? We do. So this summer was actually Makai's first summer cold calling, and it was really cool to watch. And he had a couple sellers lined up, and Danny went on those appointments, and he converted one of them, which was really cool. That is so neat. Yeah. And then the kids, when I have the flips and they don't have school, I take them. We go on site. We walk around the property. I teach them as much as I can or whatever questions they have. But this is a lifestyle. This isn't for everyone. And we know that we have to include our kids with our business. Yeah. So they feel included as well. Yeah. It, what's something that you want your kids to take away from everything that you guys are building today? Life is not easy and you got to grind. <laughs> Plain Life and simple. Is not <laughs> Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Yeah. You got to work with what you got. Yeah. And is there anything that you want them to learn when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship? Because both of you guys are so active right. in the business. 
Yeah, so Makai actually, this was his second mastermind. He was actually there with you, which was really cool. And you got to experience him there. He's He has an investor mindset since he was young and he wants to invest his money and he talks about stocks and he talks about, he started learning about taxes this last time with you guys. And he's, oh man, I, I don't want to pay taxes. What do I need to do to not pay taxes? And we're like, we got you, kid. We got you. Can you help so me? Really cool. I just got a large tax bill. <laughs> Daniel's the man for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I it's love really that. Cool vocabulary and planting these seeds now. So later in life, when it's time, it's familiar for him. Yeah. So you got on this journey, right? You found how to support Daniel. You found how to support the kids, right? You found how to flip properties. And life can get really busy. So is there anything that you and your husband do to ensure that you make time for you guys before, instead of getting lost in all the things? Because it's really easy, I think, especially the world that you guys live in. It's really big. It's yeah. so easy to get lost. So are there anything that you guys do to ensure that you make time for you guys as a unit? Yeah, we still get lost at times, but we are more intentional with our time. And as far as we go, Vegas is our place of getaway. It's a quick weekend trip. It allows us to be ourselves. We can go crazy or we can sleep all weekend. It, so Vegas is our place to go, if not Miami. So that's our time. Okay. And as far as it go, their school schedule dictates what we do with them. So any time that they have off, we intentionally put that in our calendars and that's when we schedule our trips. So we have quality time together. So because good. Because their schedule is crazy. So good. How important is having a strong support system and how do you cultivate that within your family and your business? Oh man. Something I love about Dan and his family is when I first met them, they're very connected. And mm -hmm. I know you see this too, <laughs> watching Dami, Willie, Daniel, they've always been so connected and I was so drawn to that. And they're still like that to this day. So without his family and their support, there's no way we could do what we do. Yeah, that's so good. What advice would you give to couples that are looking to build a business together or that are in the midst of challenges and building different businesses together? I would say therapy. I think <laughs> therapy is a great start, a great foundation, will help alleviate fights, will help you communicate better, will help you see the other person's point of view, be more compassionate and empathetic towards each other which will yeah. better the both of you guys to make a better decision. Yeah. That's a benefit in the long run. Yeah. I think therapy like really helps, especially like it neutralizes a conversation, especially when you have somebody that is guiding you, like a professional that's guiding you because emotions can get really yeah. high, especially under stress, especially after building businesses, right? Or things going in all different directions. So I agree with you. One of the that things that I love, there's so many things that I love about you, but one of the things that I see where you have found and I see a lot of women struggle with this is once they have kids and whether they're staying at home or taking care of the family, they have a hard time finding what's next for them, right? And how to really own that. And even sometimes when they get into real estate after not working for a really long time, they have a hard time finding owning who they are. Any words of wisdom as you found your passion and found a way to support all the things any words of wisdom for a woman that's out there that is struggling to find that right now? First of all, being a mom and a wife, I lost my identity. That was one of the hardest things I've had to overcome. And still till this day, it's still not easy because I have to support a very driven man who wants to take over the world and also raise the kids. So I'm still learning more of who I am. And therapy honestly has been the best thing for me. And yeah. learning... Granted, yes, my dad was an architect, so I grew up looking at homes and coloring in a light blue pencil on his drafting board blueprints. So I was able to see firsthand, and it was instilled in me, which was really cool, but being in this industry, it allowed me to see what my passion has been and what I'm really good at. And I love helping people build memories and make moments in their home, and it's so cool to watch and create that space for them. Yeah, love it. 
If you could give yourself, your younger self, one piece of advice before starting this journey, what would it be? Oh, man, I would say give yourself love and grace because you are going to end up in a place where you want to be. And that journey is going to be so hard, but in the end, it's going to be so worth it. So good. So what's next? You've dropped a lot of nuggets on how we can actually support visionaries, how we can support entrepreneurs or the other side that we don't always talk about. So if we are an entrepreneur, it's like, how do we actually support that person or be in their shoes? So you've dropped so much that I think our audience is going to get so much value from is what's next for Rocky or Rocio and what are you most excited about that you're working on right now? I'm ready to get this project done because once we get this project done, we can break ground, break ground on our own primaries. So I'm going to run full GC on this one and get our subcontractors, our vendors, and build our house from the ground up, which is really cool. I'm actually working on getting my GC license right now and my online interior design degree. I'm a one-stop shop for any clients who want to buy a fixer-upper. Yay. Do you only do it? Where's your location? We are in Denver, Colorado. Do you, will you do it in another down, place? Down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I would love to. I think it'd be so cool. On Zoom these days, right? I mean, I just thinking big. So play bigger, right? This is right. my play bigger mind. I would love to buy land and develop. I think that would be really cool. That's awesome. And where can people connect that with you? That would be play bigger. <laughs> Yay. Where can people connect with you? Instagram, r dixon 3 is my handle. Okay, and as we wrap up, there's always one question, speaking of playing bigger, that I ask every guest on the show is, what does Rocky do to play bigger in business or in life? I have learned to ground and center myself more. If I'm not okay, nothing else is okay, so I need to make sure I'm good at all times so everything can run the way it needs to run. Love it. You, like I said, my friend, has dropped so many different things that I think we can take away from this conversation. I want to thank you for being on our show. I know you're super busy and you moved some things around just to be on our show. And I just want to say I love you. I adore you. I appreciate you. And I will always be supporting you in playing bigger, my friend. Yay. Thanks, Raquel. I love you. Love you too.